Professor Dave and Chegg here, a very important thing to be able to do in organic chemistry is to be able to assign the formal charge of any atom in a particular molecule. Atoms can be of neutral charge, or they can have a positive or negative charge, and identifying atoms that have these charges will help us predict what molecules will do. So let's make sure we know how to do this. The main thing to understand is that an atom will be of neutral charge when it is contributing a number of electrons to a Lewis structure that is equal to its valence. For example, carbon has four valence electrons, so when it makes four bonds, it contributes one electron to each and is thus neutral. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, so when it makes three bonds and has one lone pair, it is neutral. If instead it makes four bonds, it contributes only four electrons, which is one less than its valence, so it has a formal positive charge. Oxygen has six valence electrons, so when it makes two bonds and has two lone pairs, it is neutral. But if it makes only one bond and has three lone pairs, it contributes seven electrons, which is one more than its valence, so it will have a formal negative charge. This is the easiest way to tell the formal charge of any atom within a molecule. Here are the most common situations we will be seeing over and over again in organic chemistry, starting with carbon species. Here is a carbon radical with three bonds and one unpaired electron, a carbocation with three bonds and an empty fourth coordination site, and a carbanion with three bonds and one lone pair. These are neutral, positively charged and negatively charged, respectively. Carbon has four valence electrons, but the electrons being contributed to these structures are four, three, and five, respectively. So a carbon radical is neutral, just like a carbon that is participating in four bonds, a carbocation has a formal positive charge, and a carbanion has a formal negative charge. Then for nitrogen, we have three bonds and one lone pair, four bonds and no lone pairs, or two bonds and two lone pairs. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, and here we see contributions of five, four, and six. That means we have neutral nitrogen, positively charged nitrogen, and negatively charged nitrogen. Moving on to oxygen, again we have two bonds and two lone pairs, three bonds and one lone pair, and then one bond and three lone pairs. Oxygen has six valence electrons, but these contribute six, five, and seven, respectively. So we have neutral oxygen, positively charged oxygen, and negatively charged oxygen, or an oxyanion, which we will see frequently. Then sulfur will behave just like oxygen, since it also has six valence electrons. So by replacing these oxygen atoms with sulfur atoms, all the same charges will apply. And then phosphorus is an analog of nitrogen, and we will sometimes see a phosphorus cation when it is making four bonds to other atoms. It is very important that this ability of assigning formal charge to any atom in a molecule becomes intuitive because we need to know where the charges are on a molecule to understand how it reacts with other molecules. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.